Scenic flights are often a bucket list or once in a lifetime activity for most people, which generally comes with a high cost. Therefore, if you're gonna fork over the cash, you want to know that you're actually getting your money's worth. This brings me to today's video showing you the Great Barrier Reef and Whit Sunday scenic flight experience from Airlie Beach and help you pick the best time of day to fly. This was a convenient tour with hotel pickup from our Airlie Beach Hotel. Officially, it's a one hour flight time, but you will need to have about two to three hours free, including pickup, check in, safety briefing. It all adds up, of course. This tour left from the Airlie Beach Airport, but I know some of them can leave from Proserpine. It's a small airport and you can have a wander around until your flight. Before too long, you're led onto the runway to your plane and the excitement begins to follow. But not before a celebratory photo to capture the moment. And then you go through the safety briefing about the plane in the event that there should be any issues. We also had to wear these sexy life jackets, which were a requirement when flying over water in Australia. Then it was time to jump in and taking off. This leads me to my first tip and depending on the aircraft, try not sit over the wheels or the wing support. It's a great view, but for photos and videoing, probably not the best position. But what type of aircraft should you pick in the first place? The fixed wing plane is generally your cheaper option and has more choices for tour companies in Airlie Beach. Most will guarantee a window seat, but obstructions include the wheels and the bow holding the wing up, like I said before. This is what I chose on my recent visit, and while I do prefer helicopters, it was sufficient. Helicopters will be more expensive to fly in, but the windows are bigger and a wider view for photographs. Even better if you can get the front seat or the company allows for the doors off. However, this is all banked on the fact that you have a window seat in the first place, and I'll never recommend flying in a helicopter with more than three seats and a driver. In the end, it comes down to personal choice. While I'm showing you some of the scenes from our flight, I'll detail some of my best tips. If you plan a flight, a few factors could make or break your experience. Choosing the best time of day to fly over the Great Barrier Reef and the Whit Sundays will change daily. And this depends on four things, the tides, the wind, sun position, and cloud cover. But obviously this is not a hard and fast rule and there are leeways to flying outside of these specifications too. Firstly, it's my recommendation to fly somewhere between low and medium tide, around one to one and a half metres. This will help the swirling sandbars show up around Whitehaven Beach and Hill Inlet and the stunning coral reef formations will be closer to the water's surface. Secondly, while sunset and sunrise are generally a nice romantic time for scenic flights, they're definitely not a good time to see the coral reef. This is the same for the brightest part of the day in lunchtime or the middle of the day. On the other hand, the afternoon sun will be in the wrong position to where you want to look for this particular flight. As a result, I recommend flying sometime in the morning between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. But this can vary slightly from winter to summer with the shortest and longest days and what time the sun rises. Thirdly, a little bit of cloud cover will not usually affect much, but it's not uncommon for clouds to block the sun's rays, resulting in a duller ocean colors of the blue waters and the bright white sands. There are many different apps or websites that can help show you how much cloud cover in an area has. While this is not an exact science, I've found having 50% cloud cover or less will help increase your enjoyment of the scenic flight. And lastly, if the winds are safe enough for the flight to take off, it still doesn't mean it's a good time for you to fly over the Whit Sundays. Choppy waters will make your photos of the reef appear cloudy and lack contrast. Therefore, check for wind speed and gusts and try to keep it below 25 kilometers per hour. 
The two main sites you're going to see on your scenic flight is Whitehaven Beach with Hill Inlet and Hart Reef. Since Whitehaven is closer, it's first up. It's a good thing the aircraft will take a pass over on each side of the plane, so you don't have to worry about which side you sit on. Now there's a reason why Whitehaven Beach always finds a spot on Australia's best beaches list, and it's not because of its dazzling turquoise water. It's actually worth visiting because of its draw-dropping white silica sand, and why it's often referred to as the whitest beach in the world. The sand is unique because it's made up of 98% pure silica, giving it a bright white hue and texture so soft that it'll squeak under your feet as you stroll along the shoreline. As for Hill Inlet, it technically overlooks the northern area of Whitehaven Beach, but it's worth seeing for the low tide swirling sands. This is totally an Instagrammable spot where you'll see all the photos of the Whitsundays and advertising the best vibrant colours. Obviously our high tides today didn't see the swirling sands too much on this flight, but we did see it later on in a boat trip to Whitehaven. And I'll have a video on that coming up in the future. Next, it was off to Hart Reef and started seeing the Great Barrier Reef coral formations showing up through the water. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the most impressive wonders in the natural world, stretching over 2,000 kilometres from Bundaberg to the Cape York tip. This vibrant coral ecosystem consists of over 3,000 coral reefs and an incredible 900 islands. It's a gorgeous sight to behold, featuring an abundance of marine life, including dolphins, sharks, whales, and even turtles. It has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, recognized for its significant cultural and ecological importance. It's no wonder why so many people from around the globe venture to Australia to witness this incredible natural wonder in person. Next up, we made it to Hart Reef, and this is where a wide angle camera or a phone will come in handy, definitely using the video function. Hart Reef is a very tiny coral formation in the shape of a heart and extremely quick to pass you by. And when I mean quick, it's like two seconds. Let's see that again. However, just like before, you'll get a pass over on each side of the plane, so don't stress about missing out. Straight after that, we're on the way back to Airlie Beach and flying beside one of the other aircrafts on a scenic flight. My experience of the scenic flight from Airlie Beach was a positive one, but the conditions could have actually been better. And obviously, I'll know that for next time. But I hope our video helps you pick a good time and get the most out of your flight. While I flew at the right time in the mornings, the winds were actually higher than usual, the tides were about two metres, and there were lots of clouds on the reef. This, in turn, made the waves choppy and shaded some of the reef from the sun. That being said, the company I chose to fly with was organised, friendly, and I felt very safe travelling with them. And honestly, these minor imperfections didn't take away from the overall greatness of the experience. I highly recommend taking a scenic flight of the Great Barrier Reef from Airlie Beach. It's an experience that will leave you in awe, especially if you can time it better than I did. Thanks for watching today's video, guys, but click here if you want to check out my sunset sailing experience in Airlie Beach. And I'll see you again for the next one, folks.